Leo is on the air. From Hollywood, where the blue bloods of the screen compete with the blue Pacific in beauty and brilliance, Metro Golden Mare brings you a quarter hour with the stars in music and song and dramatic highlights from the new success, The Shopborn Angel, starring Margaret Sullivan and James Stewart with Walter Pidgeon. The time of the Shopworn Angel is 1917, immediately before America's first troops sailed eastward. The locale is New York City. It is a history-making year. Streets filled with marching men, homes filled with sobbing women. It is a time of farewell kisses and sad partings, particularly for a rookie named Bill Pettigrew and a showgirl named Daisy Heath. But more about them later in the program. Right now, the metro golden Mayor Orchestra under the expert baton of Edward Ward, musically sets the period of the shopworn angel with a rousing medley of melodies of that era. Prime interest to entertainment lovers will be the fascinating musical score of the Shopborn Angel. Not only does it bring you charming musical memories in its recreation of popular song hits of yesteryear, it also introduces a brand new theme melody aimed at the bestseller class. The orchestra plays Let's Pretend It's True. <laughs> Now for a radio preview of highlight scenes from The Shopworn Angel. Margaret Sullivan appears as Daisy Heath, a Broadway cabaret singer. James Stewart is Private Bill Pettigrew, a rookie doughboy from Texas. Walter Pigeon is Sam Bailey, a wealthy man about town. A romance between Daisy and Sam Bailey is flowering beautifully, until Daisy and Bill meet quite by accident. 
At first, Daisy looks upon her random rendezvous with Bill as somewhat of a harmless lark. But as the day nears for his departure for France, she finds herself, against her will, curiously and strongly attached to the plain-spoken Texan, who makes no secret of his intense love for her. We pick them up one evening in Central Park. It looks like it's going to rain. Yeah, I can tell by the way the wind's been shifting. That's New York for you. It always rains at the right time. Other places it rains at the wrong time. But here it's always just whenever you finish your picnic or just after the ninth inning. Whenever you think you should play long enough and it's time to go home, it rains. You were sure I said that before, weren't you? Bill, why should I be sorry? Well, maybe because you figure it's all your fault by being so nice to me. Now that we gotta probably never see each other again, or at least not for a long time, why, you, you think that'll make me unhappy? It'll make you very unhappy, Bill? Yep. But you can't be unhappy, Bill. It'll be all right. You'll go on pretending. Pretend you're just going away for the weekend. You'll be right back. Just pretend, Bill. You're good at that. No, not anymore. I just guess I can't pretend anymore. Dreaming's all right if that's all you got, but when you find the real thing, you're just just not satisfied with it anymore. I want the real thing. You, Daisy. <laughs> Sam Bailey, who has loved Daisy for a long time, is not particularly happy at the turn of events, for he refuses to believe Daisy loves Bill and fears their companionship will lead them only to unhappiness. He arrives at Daisy's apartment to find Bill standing before an open fireplace, waiting for Daisy. Oh, good evening, Mr. Bailey. Oh, Bill. Well, won't you come in? Thanks. I'm glad you're here, Mr. Bailey, because I have something I want to tell you. We can take turns. You go first. Well, you see, Daisy means an awful lot to me, and I've asked her to marry me. I see. I thought maybe we ought to speak to you about it first on account of me having to leave tonight and everything. Do you mind, sir? Yes, I do. Sam, do you mind if I speak to Sam a minute alone, please? Sam, will you listen to me? Will you try to understand what I'm going to say? We've known each other for a long time, you and I, and we've always been in love. We never knew it, though, because there wasn't any way to know. We'd forgotten what it was like being in love with somebody else. Maybe we never knew. And then Bill came along. What we've got now, and we do love each other now, Sam. What we found this morning, we really stole from that kid. All right, we owe it to Bill, but you and I are in love now, and I want you to marry me. Sam, you said you'd listen to me, please. He's leaving for France tonight. His boat sails in a couple of hours, and he wants to marry me before he goes. He wants to go to France knowing that I'm his wife. Sam, don't laugh at me when I tell you this. But to Bill, I'm a dream that's come true. Something he dreamed about before he ever met me, and he's kept on dreaming. Don't ask me how. And that's what he wants to take with him. Not me, not Daisy Heath to live with and make love to, but a dream, Sam, without a name. A dream that began a long time ago somewhere in Texas and might end somewhere in France. But if it doesn't end, when he comes back... When he comes back, I can tell him about Daisy Heath. I can tell him then because he can take it then. S suppose he were told about Daisy Heath. Right now, the one I'm in love with, would he still want her to marry him? I think he'd want to die. Here we leave Bill and Sam to their shop-worn angel, and may the best man win. And now back to Edward Ward, leading the Metro Golden Mayor Orchestra, a chorus of hundreds of voices, and the entire cast of the shop-worn angel in a stirring rendition of a popular old song which packs a tuneful wallop in a new picture. From the shop-worn angel, pack up your troubles. up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. While you but Lucifer to light your bag, smile, boys, that's the style. What's the use of worrying? It never was worth 
this program, which was produced at the Metro-Golden-Mare Studios, you have heard the voices of Margaret Sullivan, James Stewart, and Walter Pidgeon in dramatic scenes from the new film, The Shopworn Angel. This is the MGM reporter saying thank you for listening. <laughs>